Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marion Revol. I am a manager within the Bearing Point Retail Luxury and CPG team. We are on January the 22nd for our last day brief podcast on the NRF by Bearing Point. I have the pleasure to share the micro today with Stefan Zattler, partner within the Bearing Point Retail CPG and Luxury Practice, and Amelia Lechinski, manager within the Bearing Point Retail Luxury and CPG Practice. Hello, Marion. Hi, Marion. So, Amelia, can you please tell us which retail trends have been discussed at the NRF yesterday? Yes, of course. So, during our previous podcasts, we shared with you day by day the most striking trends. And now it's time to look back. We've experienced a strong e-commerce acceleration, four to six years of growth in one year, and a necessity to meet consumers where they are by developing omni-channel fulfillment methods in a unified commerce perspective. As a consequence, it is key to increase supply chain hyper-agility, leveraging robotics, and enhancing visibility. Moreover, Brand's authenticity and customer centricity is the way to enable sustainable recovery and drive long-term loyalty. Finally, data will be precious to enable personalized experiences, but also to predict the unpredictable. To conclude, the pandemic accelerated these trends, boosting retailers' digital transformation by one to two years and highlighted just how technologies can make the difference. However, it's not easy to stay relevant looking at the pace of change. So let's now share some perspectives on key tech to invest in, leveraging Euromonitor's insights. In order to foster online discovery, it will be key to focus on cloud and AI to improve the online experience, but also AI, VR to provide immersive experiences beyond the act of selling. Due to COVID, 68% of retailers expanded digital payments, trying to provide frictionless payment experiences using digital wallets. Mainly why cryptocurrencies, AI, VR, and IoT are still viewed as more futuristic payment technologies. In terms of delivery, consumers favor price, visibility, convenience, over speed, So robots and drones will be key tech to deliver while considering the sustainability criteria. Already 44% of clients are ready for that, even more in China. Auto ID technologies enable operational efficiency and traceability along the entire supply chain. Robotics is already key for supply chain execution warehouses and cloud arrive in store with 60% of consumers from big cities being ready for that. Regarding in-store experiences, 56% of consumers want to try before buying. Virtual try-on leverage AI VR can enable that in the pandemic pandemic context while reinforcing the experience. 55% of retailers see 5G tech as an enabler for more sophisticated experiences in the future. So, Stefan, which conferences did you like most yesterday? Thanks, Amelia, for that question. I'm happy to do so. So today there were actually lots of conferences with beauty players like L'Oreal, Sally Beauty, Alta Beauty, and ELC. So we decided to give you an overview of how they address new customer needs following the pandemic, what services they propose, and what their key learnings are. Obviously, beauty brands have to meet new customer expectations. First, in terms of products, there's a strong request from customers related to locally sourced, green, clean, and natural products. The big trend in cosmetics a few years ago was active cosmetics that are made with chemicals. Second, there has been a shift in beauty shopping towards digital experiences, omni-channel, and personalization. Um, Shoppers today are seeking for new beauty routines and more recommendations, probably since guidance and testers are more complicated to get. They need to experience the product as they're used to, and they ask for more flexibility when it comes to delivery. As all retailers, beauty brands have to adapt to this new shopping paradigm. 
being unable to advise their customers directly in stores, Alta Beauty and ELC develop new channels like WhatsApp, WeChat, or SMS to stay connected with them like other players in the luxury industry also do it. To ensure a consistent discussion, Alta Beauty empowered their advisors with product re recommendations powered by real-time data and combined with AI. By having all the information available, beauty advisors can have relevant personalized conversations. ELC goes beyond messages or messaging one-to-one -one in virtual conversations towards one-to-many live shopping experiences. The clear mission of beauty brands is to make the lives of their customers easier. That's why lots of services were developed during the pandemic and will most likely stick on. For example, L'Oreal put QR codes on all products in order to share product information and reviews. Alta Beauty and ELC developed a makeup try-on application, but unfortunately it's not possible for perfumes as there is no smell and vision technology. Finally, like other retailers, the beauty players implemented contactless payment to enable frictionless experiences. I believe the, the biggest shift is related to delivery services with many delivery options now proposed to clients like Bopis, AK by online pickup and store across all brands, curbside pickup at Alta Beauty and ELC, same day delivery leveraging ship from store at Sally Beauty and Alta Beauty, um, product auto replenishment at ELC. To summarize it, the beauty industry isn't an exception and has to adapt to recent market changes due to the pandemic. Our takeaway is to reach out to the field to get the best customer understanding and collect innovative ideas in order to elaborate meaningful responses. In any case, the test and learn approach is our favorite. All innovations won't be perfect from the start. As ELC said, fail fast, fail cheap, innovate. Some tech won't work, some will in some places, but not in others. It is okay to sometimes fail. So Marion, would you please tell us what we should not miss out today? Sure, Stefan, that will be my pleasure. So if you want to know more today about the world after the human transformation and the customer management, here are the key conferences you should check out today. For the last day, we recommend three main conferences. The first one is at 5 p.m. GMT plus one. It's called Power Lunch, mobilizing with succeeding in volatile times. You will hear from influential female leaders, Judith McKenna, president and CEO of Walmart International, Sharon Late, CEO of the Vitamin Shop, Mindy Grossman, President and CEO of WW International Incorporation. They will explain how they continued to steward large organizations with resilience and agility through a year of unprecedented change. We propose you a second conference at 7 p.m., Fashion's Digital Transformation. In this session, Facebook, GD.com, and Truefit will discuss how the fashion brand clients are transforming their business to serve the digital consumer. And finally, the third recommendation and last NRF conference at 7.45 p.m. is winning through vertical commerce in today's on-demand world. The Fanatic CEO, a sport brand, will be joined by Enrin Andrews, a sport broadcaster and founder of women's fan gear line Wear. They will speak about how Fanatic's vertical model and innovative merchandising initiatives are unlocking opportunities to enhance the shopping experience. Here we are, another great program for the last day of conferences. We wish you a beautiful end of the day, a great week, and hope to see you in one of our country-based dedicated webinars in February or March for further NRF debrief. Feel free to ask your local Bearing Point representative for more information. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.